Bama with 10 All-Americans. Great season for the Crimson Tide. They've got a huge matchup in the college football playoff. We're going to talk about all of that. Welcome to the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Like and subscribe if you're not part of what we're doing already. And if you are, hey, Roll Tide, thanks for being here. Let's get this thing started. What do you say, guys? With Chad Anderson, I'm Mick Gillespie. We're in Nashville, Tennessee at the Gaylord uh, Opryland Hotel, and we're talking Alabama football. Uh, Maybe next time we're in a hotel, it will be out in Pasadena, right, where Alabama will take on Michigan. And uh, you're starting to get some of the postseason accolades and 10 different Alabama players, All-Americans this year. Isn't that crazy? Um, And this is – this is kind of the sit back and enjoy um, and Alabama gets to be recognized for everything they've done all season long because this team was written off. They were done. They were left for dead. Uh, there were players that fans wanted to leave in Tampa before getting back on that plane from Tampa back to Tuscaloosa in the middle of September. And what do you know? Alabama sitting here as a number four seed. Uh, all these players who, again, written off are getting all these accolades, all these recognitions. And it's that time of year. You get this two week stretch or so where this award, this award, this award. Nobody would have guessed that Alabama would have this many players on these two lists. J.C. Latham, an offensive line. Justin Bigby, the um, defensive lineman. Good to see him come back too. Yeah. had to deal with an injury. Wasn't sure he was ever going to play again. And then he turns out to be uh, the best defensive lineman on the team. Well, well, Dallas Turner, too, right? He was on the list. Terry and Arnold, defensive back, Kool-Aid McKinstry and Caleb Downs, part of that secondary that has been fantastic. Kicker yep. Will Reichert, uh, Neyland Hibbert, the long snapper, Tyler Booker's uh, second team on the offensive line, and then James Burnup, the punter. And when you look at the way that Alabama has won games this year, okay. special teams have been a really big part of it in the kicking game. And it's and, and it's uh, great to see both of those guys, Will Reichert and James Burnup, honored, yeah, and, recognized. Uh, yeah. Um, Reichert missed, what, three field goals all year long? Mm-hmm. Um, and if you were ever curious as to what kind of a leg he has, he has an NFL leg. Mm-hmm. Because look at go back to that field goal he made uh, in the first quarter against Georgia in the SEC championship. It was a 43 yard field goal, but it was good Mick from 55 at least, if not further. Uh, He hit it uh, three quarters, if not more up the net inside Mm -hmm. the pipes. Uh, It just got such a great leg able to make it almost look effortless a lot of times. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, Nick Saban talked about Riker coming back. And he told Nick Saban, I want to work on certain things that's going to increase my draft stock or my NFL opportunities. He's done that this year. He he struggled in the LSU game, mm-hmm. um, had the one miss at Auburn, but that's voodoo. Uh, so, you know, what a great year up for the Groza Award as well. Yeah, so it's going to be fun to see. Uh, not going to have uh, Jalen Milrow on the Heisman list this year, but I think next year, if he continues to grow and get better, that's a possibility. I mean, he got some votes. I was surprised. Um, not that Marvin Harrison, obviously, is an amazing receiver. He's either number one or two. Some people were going Malik Neighbors, uh, but Marvin Harrison's just outstanding. He's unbelievable. Probably be a top five pick in the NFL right. draft. Um but I was surprised. He felt like he kind of snuck in there for him. And he's not going to win, but he got the invite. And when you look at the odds online, like FanDuel and DraftKings, mm-hmm. Milrow had actually climbed to the four spot. Milrow wasn't going to win either. Mm-mm. But just after the performances and Milrow and the way that Alabama won those final couple of games, I was a little surprised. I thought they would only send three. Yeah, I thought they'd send Daniels, Knicks, and, and Penix. Um, I was kind of surprised to see Harrison – slip in there but he's amazing yeah uh, i would have probably put uh, malik neighbors over him as far as like the guys that we've seen at wide receiver he's he's a freak (laughs) absolutely (laughs) phenomenal right um all right 
thoughts on Florida State not getting in? I mean, that's still a big topic of conversation, right? It and is. there's been a lot of hate that's been directed at, at Alabama. I say bring it on. You know, I, I really – it's just – the bottom line is this. We've kind of gone over this, but it's almost like you have to keep re-educating everybody. First yeah. off, Bama played the fifth best, highest rated schedule. Florida State was 55, yeah. right? Correct. Their best win was LSU. That was Alabama's third best win. Bama beat Georgia, right, which was the best win. And then Bama lost to Texas. Yeah, they're also in the college football playoff. So that's the yeah. best loss you could have. Florida State played a, a, a weak schedule. And um, honestly, man, like where I think the, com- the the committee put themselves in a, in this spot is that when I look at the top seven or eight teams, even though Florida State is undefeated, I don't think they're better than Georgia, Ohio State. No. And I would I would have put them like seventh. And, and then that way, you know, it's not like, hey, you guys were this close, even though I know that they were this close. The other thing is for them, which is unfortunate is I think that if Alabama loses to Georgia, they get in just because they would have had the entire field of unbeaten teams. The fact that you're putting a team in with one loss, Texas kind of rode that wave, but it doesn't feel like a lot of this anger is being directed at Texas for getting in. Everybody's upset at Alabama for getting in over Florida State. Yeah, that's a really well said breakdown because – Texas, everybody should be just as pissed as Texas. I put this out on Twitter on Sunday morning before the show. I didn't understand why it was okay because in everybody's poll, Mick, they had Michigan, Washington, Texas, and then Florida State or Alabama. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you who had Michigan, Washington, Texas, and FSU, why was it okay to put Texas ahead of FSU in the three spot? Right. But it's not okay to put Alabama ahead of uh, FSU in the four spot. You are contradicting yourself. And they say, well, Texas beat Alabama. Mm -hmm. It's not a Texas-Alabama discussion. It's a Texas-Florida State discussion in that scenario. And nobody would would really recognize that. The other thing with Florida State being undefeated, look, here's the problem. At, At the end of the day, it was very, very simple. Florida State got left out because Jordan Travis broke his leg. That's why he got left. That's why they got left out. That's it. If if Florida State had beaten Louisville with Jordan Travis 16 to 6, if they had beaten Florida 24 to 15 with Jordan Travis, they were in. They they were going to be in the playoff. There was nothing you could do about it. The and then it was going to come down to Texas and Alabama. Right. But let's also be realistic that this wasn't an offensive lineman who got injured. This wasn't a defensive back who got injured or your kicker who got injured. This was the quarterback, a Heisman Trophy contending quarterback. Also, no offense to him, but it wasn't Greg McElroy from 20, uh, 2009. You know, it was a Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback. Mm-hmm. You cannot tell me, absolutely cannot tell me, that this Florida State team, that the way it sits today, would have gone undefeated through that whole schedule. They would have lost to LSU. Mm -hmm. They would have lost to Clemson. They would have lost to a couple of teams, maybe NC State. I can't remember if they played them, probably to North Carolina. They would have lost games. They would have lost to Miami. They would have lost games throughout the season. So a team today that is not good enough to play in the Final Four can't ride the coattails of the healthy team and then say, oh, no, we're the same team. You're not. You're just not the same team. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it, it does suck. If I was Florida State, I'd be just as mad. Mm-hmm. I'd be complaining, screaming, crying, coming up with all angles, looking for lawsuits, attorney generals, politicians. I'd be furious, too. I don't blame them for that. I'm just saying that the common sense and the logistics and the way you look at it, like you can't as much as you want to argue that they got it wrong you have to also argue that they got it right because everything that has been said mm-hmm. makes sense and is common sense. Yeah, I mean, if, well, it's a business decision. You know, if you put them in, then all of a sudden the product itself is going to be less valuable. And, and, and at the end of the day, we've talked about this all the time. Look at the 1,300 kids in the transfer portal. It's a business decision. The SEC brings in money. Having the SEC champ, which – 
if you're going to win the national championship, you, you know, the, the television viewers want to see the SEC and Alabama go down. And um, they're trying to sell the, you know, the package for next year. And they need close games. And you, without Jordan Travis, it was going to be the spreads are going to be like 14. And, you know, there was no chance at all that Florida State went, would have won the national championship without him. Watch. All you had to do was watch how bad their offense was operating. You're telling me that between that game and then all of a sudden, if they went to the Rose Bowl and played and played Michigan, that they would figure out how to move the football effectively. That just it, it just didn't match up because of the injury. And. If you're going out there and trying to make money, you want to put the best people out there. You would have gotten the Georgia TCU game again. Yeah, right. And nobody wanted that. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted that. You would have gotten it. Nobody wanted it. And it just didn't make sense. Also, too, it would be different if the committee, the committee did one or did two things here real quick. One, it's not like they made up this rule. Mm -hmm. It's not like they pulled an excuse out of thin air. It's literally written in their guidelines. That if a key player has been out or is out or will miss the playoffs, mm -hmm. they can take that into account. It was already written in there. It, it's not anything new that they just made up mm -hmm. in order to figure out how to keep somebody out. That's one. So everybody needs to stop crying about that. It was already there. Uh, number two, the committee, it's its own fault because they refused to recognize Alabama in the final month of the season. Right. And they continued to pump Oregon. Yeah. They pumped Oregon. Yeah, I know. We complained about their resume. They lost as a 10 point favorite and they're out. But because they kept pumping Oregon and because they put Ohio State in ahead of Alabama yep. and ahead of Texas, it made it even worse yeah, right. because it kept them down yep. when Alabama and Texas were proving they shouldn't and be. They should have moved them out of eight. All right. Well, Chad, uh, tell everyone about Modern Lending. All right. Modern Lending. Uh, so that is actually my company along with a partner of mine. We own the brokerage. We've had the uh, privilege, been blessed enough to help over 10,000 families for the last 13 years of my career. We have helped with over $3 billion, with a B, dollars in mortgages, purchases, and refinances. Rates have dipped recently. I'm telling you, if you have credit card debt, which unfortunately most of America has, you need to reach out and at least ask about what your budget could look like if we consolidate that. Uh, we're offering credits. I had told you on a previous video, $1,800 lender credit. That is in honor of the 18 national championships of the Crimson Tide. Um, we're going to offer that as a lender credit on anyone who reaches out. Um, cell phone is there. Website is there. Chatanderson.info on the screen. So, And if you would like to just honestly pick our brain, ask questions, that's fine as well because you may need our help down the road. So we're here for you either way. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Roll Tide, and we'll talk to you again soon.